All right. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Katie Monahan, and I'm a communications strategist here at the Ohio Arts Council, and I am super excited to welcome you to today's informational session about the OAC Rife Gallery's call for curatorial proposals. So we will meet our presenters here in just a minute, but of course, there are just a few housekeeping items that we need to go over first. So first, everyone today is tuning in in listen-only mode, uh, but that doesn't mean that you have to stay silent. Feel free to utilize the Q&A box or the chat there in your control panel to ask questions. Uh, feel free to type those in as we go throughout the webinar, and we'll monitor those, and we'll make sure to leave plenty of time to answer everything in the dedicated Q&A session at the end. Next, live captioning is available for today's webinar, and you can access those captions by clicking on the closed captioning icon and selecting show subtitles. And if you have audio issues or trouble connecting, we recommend refreshing your browser. And if that doesn't work, try logging off and logging back in. And please keep in mind that because we are presenting from different locations, there may be some slight variations in bandwidth or internet stability. So if one of us freezes up or the sound fluctuates a bit, uh, thank you in advance for bearing with us. I promise we will keep on rolling right on through any technical issues. And finally, we are recording today's webinar and the recording will be available on our website webinars page at oac.ohio.gov slash webinars and on our YouTube channel by the end of end of this week. Um, I think that does it for housekeeping items. Yes, we are good. So now I am happy to welcome my colleague, OAC Rife Gallery Director Kat Sheridan. Kat, welcome. Thanks so much for being here. I'm going to hand things over uh, for you to get us started. Thank you so much, Katie. Hello, everyone. As Katie said, my name is Kat Sheridan. I'm the director of the Ohio Arts Council's Rife Gallery, and I am extraordinarily pleased to chat with you today about the call for curatorial proposals. Um, Erica Hess is my guest here to chat with us, and I would love, Erica, can you unmute and go ahead and introduce yourself so these folks know who's chatting with them? Yes, yes. So hello, everybody. I'm so thrilled to see you here. Uh, Kat, thank you again for having me on here with you. And thank you, Katie, for that wonderful introduction. Uh, my name is Erica Hess. I am an artist. I am a curator. And I'm also the host of I Like Your Work podcast, which interviews artists, curators, collectors, gallerists, and provides resources for artists. So um, again, I'm just really thrilled to be part of this. That's uh, great segue. So you all can tell uh, why we have Erica here to chat, but there's yet another reason. Um, Erica was recently a curator for an exhibition that was held at the Rife Gallery. Um, it was called Build It, Artists Creating Community in Ohio. Um, and yeah, so you have firsthand experience with what it's like to be a curator at the OAC Rife Gallery, as well as a curator, you know, by and large in, in a multitude, a myriad of communities, um, as well as the artist perspective. And I think that really well-rounded view allows for us to get into some key information and ideas that will help the folks on this call and those that are watching the recording really comprehend and, and dive in and saturate with the information that they need to go forward and submit a proposal. Yes, yes. Well, again, thrilled to be sharing that information and uh, that process. So if you guys have any questions as we're going through this, of course, feel free to submit it. And myself and Kat will, of course, do our best to answer all of them for you. So, Erica, we chatted a bit uh, before about the perspective of an artist and how that has helped you in your curatorial practices, but also I would love for you to chat a bit about uh, your experience of putting together an exhibition, like how do you identify a theme, like can you give some examples of how we go forward in this and what you think about as you endeavor to curate an exhibition? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So one of my favorite things about curating exhibitions is that it is in many ways separate from my own art practice. So you guys can see behind me that I am a painter and I have a certain type of um, 
practice uh, in my own studio. And when I go about curating an exhibition, the really wonderful part is, is I can explore an idea that I'm interested in or a type of artwork that I'm interested in and put together a proposal. Um, and it allows me to have another dimension to my own artistic practice. And um, so as I move forward with curating an exhibition, um, it can be on a social topic. It could be on a certain theme. Uh, build it at right was where I wanted to explore artists who had a very serious studio practice, who were incredible artists, but were also going um, into another realm, which is building community in the arts in Ohio. And so that was a really great place to um, kind of jump off from. And so, you know, as we get into this conversation more and more, you know, one thing I want to suggest to artists or for curators is, you know, you start with that kind of core idea. In fact, I had somebody once tell me the more simplistic idea, the idea, the better, because it will always expand as you begin to add artists in, add different ideas in. Um, and so that's how Build It really uh, originated, was I, I wanted to explore that theme um, and and of course, Rife was such a wonderful space to be able to have that exhibition in. It's um, there's so many people coming in and out, um, and it's just it's a huge, beautiful gallery. So, so that's really how I went about um, beginning that exhibition and curating that exhibition. All right, so let's chat about what this call is about. Um, so. I think most of you have probably gotten a memo because you're on this webinar. This is the first of its kind for the Ohio Arts Council's Rife Gallery, and that is super exciting. Um, the plan in that is to expand our reach and opportunity for Ohio's curatorial voices. Um, as you know, a kind of a, a small staff, it, there's only so many people that I can reach out and know. And in an effort to mirror the way in which the larger agency of OAC, the granting agency that we're a part of, um, they do a phenomenal job of these panels to um, give equity, more equity, because they have more voices at the table to identify and uh, coalesce that slate of grantees. So I thought, okay, this is this already exists. The wheel has been built. Can I shift this and do this for the gallery? And you know, there are plenty of folks that do this all over the world, right? There are call for proposals for curatorial um, all over the place. So I wanted to make sure that we gave a template that one um, allows for that greater equity, allows for us to to dive deeper into Ohio's curatorial voices by expanding it beyond what my network allows for me to do. The other thing that um, we really thought about was, can we put this together, format it in such a way that other organizations can leverage this information for their own calls? So, you know, tooling it to what they need. Um, my hope is that this will be a template that folks can take forward and use for themselves too. Um, so the other bit, and Erica, you and I chatted about this a bit, what many folks may or may not realize is that a lot of folks come to the Ohio Arts Council with questions of like, tell me about some artists or tell me about some organizations or tell me about so-and-so, who, who are these people around the state? This call, this call for proposals will amass a list that expands what I already have so that when people come calling to me, which they do often, looking for phenomenal curators with great ideas, um, I can reference this list and say, you know, these are folks that I think fit that bill for you. Yeah, go ahead, Erica. I think that is such a good point. And I really want to highlight that for everybody that's listening. You know, so many times um, we tend to put our name in the hat for, you know, a curatorial um, exhibition, a open call, etc. And if we don't get it, we feel really bummed out, like, oh, why didn't this work out? So knowing that your information is going to be kept and that it will be on a list and that you will have eyes on your proposal and, you know, hopefully you get it this round, but if not, 
you will be referenced to other things. I think that's huge to understand and to know um, as you put this together, or if you're on the fence, like, oh, I'm thinking about doing a proposal, but I'm not sure, um, you know, get your name on on that list, put it, put it together, get yourself out there if this is something you're interested in, which obviously you are, or you wouldn't be here at this webinar. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so really kind of, really base value of that in the, the hopes is to expand our reach. Yeah. So let's actually, um, let's have a look at this call. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and show you exactly where you want to go to find all this good stuff. Um, so here we are. You all are probably very familiar with this website. This is the OACs website. So this is homepage, oac.ohio.gov. Tons of yummy information all in here. You can see it drops down and gives you additional things here. We're going to slide right on over here to the Rife Gallery. And you can see in this drop down, we have on view. So if you want to look at the exhibition that we have up now, you can pop in there. Um, but you're here for the call for curatorial proposals. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. So here we are. Oh, and there we were. <laughs> <laughs> So this is it. This is the call for proposals. Um, over here on the right, you have some helpful links. You have this downloadable call for proposals, and that'll give you the full three page kind of prospectus, just like this, that you can print off or put onto your computer, download, look at, absorb, love. Um, but it's also right here on this page. So let's have a look again. First time we're doing this, so we're really excited. Those that don't know, the Rife Gallery is a part of the Ohio Arts Council. And as a part of the Ohio Arts Council, a really big kind of part of our mission is to extend the mission of the Ohio Arts Council writ large, um, which is to highlight and love on that exceptional talent of Ohio artists. Um, yeah, so let's get down here to the overview first of its kind, things that will be evaluated in these proposals. This is really the, the real juice of it, right? These are the key, four key things that you wanna think about as you're proposing this idea. They're gonna be evaluated on the strength of concept and uniqueness. So what's that mean? Erica, let's, let's chat about this a little bit. Like we talked about the fact that like, there are plenty of people that will say there's nothing new in this world, right? But, you know, there are remixes. Have a listen on the radio. The perfect example, <laughs> right? Like, hey, go on Netflix it? right now. Everything is being remixed, you know? Right. Um, and I think that's a really good point, Kat, because I think sometimes, um, from a curatorial sense, when you see that, you're like, oh, strength of con concept and uniqueness. Like, what is that calling for? Um, really, what for me, what I see when I'm looking at this is that you've really thought this through. And again, starting at a very basic level and working your way up is a wise way, I think, uh, in putting together your letter of intent, which Kat is gonna be touching on in a moment or so. Um, so, you know, it does not have to be something that has never been seen before, but is being through being seen through your experience and your eyes, because we don't have your experience in your eyes. So it will end up being unique if you're thinking it through. Excellent. So number two, think about alignment to the goal of highlighting and celebrating the vast talents of Ohio's professional artists. Um, pun intended, Ohio is rife with talent. <laughs> like truly. <laughs> it is. That was a good one. We have we have the biennial up right now, and my goodness, it is so strong. And there were at least five additional exhibitions that could have been made out of just the submissions. There is phenomenal talent in this state. Um, yeah, I mean, Erica, you know that. You yeah, yeah. I mean, in fact, it's funny. When I first, I'm originally from Ohio. I left, I moved back because it's such a fantastic state. And when I moved back, people were saying, oh my gosh, Ohio has such a great, not only um, 
artists and creators, but such great support. You know, they were like, oh, you get so much support from Ohio Arts Council. Uh, so I think that's really phenomenal. Um, we do. We have so many people here that are very talented. Excellent. So number three, adherence to the guidelines. So we'll go through the guidelines in a little bit. Um, and then number four, of course, curators comparable experience. And we'll chat about that more too. But when you think about comparable experience, um, it doesn't have to be the exacting curatorial role. It can be your association within that, your support within that. So um, think broadly in that and make sure that you are not uh, not listing things that do have application there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And don't right. let that turn you away either. I Again, if you are somebody who is interested in pursuing curation and maybe you're a little bit newer to that realm, um, don't let that stop you from, again, putting your application in and thinking, like Kat said, about the different roles you may have played surrounding an exhibition, you know, installing it, being part of it, you know, et cetera. So so definitely don't let that be something that turns you away. Perfect. So um, we chatted a bit about guidelines and a portion of that is um, how do we put together the artists within the exhibition? Um, right here, it talks about the proposals highlighting the immense talent, um, has geographic diversity. What does that mean? Uh, Erica, you want to talk about geographic diversity? Yes, I do. So uh, <laughs> when I was going about, you know, putting together my proposal and putting together the different artists who I, I was looking at, I felt like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm really hitting this diversity, you know, within the uh, geographical regions of Ohio. I have some people up north in Cleveland. I have some people in Cincinnati. I got some people in Columbus. I'm hitting these different areas, you know, and then I sat down with Kat and we had this wonderful conversation you know, about um, really pushing it beyond that. I'm originally from a rural part of Ohio. I'm from the New Concord, Cambridge area. And there's a lot happening all over the state. And I think so many times we tend to turn towards the cities uh, to find artists, but I think a strong curatorial proposal um, is going to look beyond that. At least that is what I, I learned and what I ended up doing. And, um, yeah, again, we don't want to do a disservice to our state by not looking beyond, you know, the larger cities or the quote unquote, you know, like second tier, not second tier cities, but slightly smaller cities. Um, go beyond that, you know, there's just so much to find. That's right. Yeah, the OAC is really dedicated to making sure that we support the arts across the state and the gallery is no different. We are part of the OAC and that absolutely applies here too. So um, I thought that one little bit of, of uh, historical fun would be helpful for folks. Um, and then also think about your diversity as far as levels of um, intersection, because there are many ways that folks can be diverse, you know, whether it be age, ethnicity, religion, uh, location. Um, there are so many ways that can stack that. Um, so think about that and recognize that if you have all 31 year old artists that are female, perhaps that's not a very uh, intersectional group, right? Like, so keep that in mind. Um, oh, and the last bit about inclusion of artists within this, um, the final selection of artists that you'll have will be 20% of our individual excellence awardees. And those of you that are not familiar with that, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you become familiar. It is a phenomenal program run by my esteemed colleague, uh, Kathy Signorino and Chaz O'Neill. Um, they're lovely people and we'll be happy to chat with you. Uh, let's see here, where am I going? Um, it's right in here. It's totally in here. Oh, individual artist <laughs> opportunities and your resources there. Just FYI, Individual Excellence Awards will open for those of you that are artists or no artists. Make sure they submit. It's your, your body of work that you submit and people from all over the nation have a look at it. And 75 artists per biennium. So every other year, it's visual arts. 75 artists are awarded these phenomenal awards by the OAC um, through that panel work. And it unlocks a, a lot of really lovely opportunities. Um, 
So one of those additional opportunities is being on this list to be selected by curators to then put you into an exhibition at the Rife. Yeah. And I just like to add in there that um, when I started thinking about this, I was like, oh, man, I'm really going to have to dive into this and look. It was very easy to select artists from this list. And in fact, I had already done studio visits with many people. <laughs> so many of the people that I was already planning to include in the exhibition fell into this category. Um, and it was actually really wonderful because I was able to, uh, again, like Kat said, learn about new artists very easily. So yes. Wonderful. And we'll talk more about that when we look at the resources a little bit later. But again, those that are artists or no visual artists, the submission window will open next summer, uh, June 1st. So mark your calendar. Um, so what do we what what's the end game of this? Um, four proposals will be selected for the slate in 2024. And each of those exhibitions are 10 weeks long. Um, and you can look forward to regular check-ins and support from me um, to kind of walk through what the deliverables are, give guidance, and work through that. Additionally, um, $35 honorarium for our curators. Anything you want to add on that, Erica? Uh just that it was really wonderful working with Kat. I mean, it, it really was Kat. You um, were extremely helpful, knowledgeable. So for those of you that may not be as familiar with the Rife, maybe you're not local, Kat goes above and beyond in terms of communicating with you and really helping you see your vision through. Um, and you were always approachable. Like I could always come to you with a question if I had it. Um, so again, um, it's a great location, it's a great space, it's great support, great programming, um, and the honorarium is, is really wonderful there too, so. Perfect, thank you so much, that means a lot. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, so speaking of location, uh, those that are not familiar, the OAC Rife Gallery is right on Capitol Square. We're directly across from the State House, um, and it is in the Vern Rife Center for Government and the Arts. Um, on the first floor, you enter the doors and we're right there in the front. Um, it's a 4,000 square foot space, so really lovely. It has this kind of winding uh, nature to the space that allows you to be able to break it up in a, a really neat way, in, a, in the way that maybe a, a box shape wouldn't allow as readily. Um, so something to think about there. Oh, also super important, we are always free. We are always free and we welcome visitors from the youngest among us to the oldest and we get everything in between. Um, so it's pretty cool. It's a really beautiful space. I mean, um, it was incredible to curate a show in there because it's so large. And we'll be talking about this um, in a few minutes about uh, getting the work ready or putting together your proposal and thinking about the space that it will be in. But there's this beautiful, large glass entryway so that the show is just so viewable from people that are not even going into the gallery, but walking by, which I think is a major plus. All right. So now we are on to our guidelines bit. So um, surprise, surprise, Ohio Arts Council uh, are ready and excited to support our curators and artists who live in Ohio. So note that you as a curator, as well as the artists that you're proposing should be residents of Ohio. Um, the other bit that is pretty common is curators, if you are an artist, don't submit your work as a part of it. Um, it allows for you to have sole focus on the curatorial role. And um, Erica, as an artist and curator, you want to speak to what that allows for you? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, kind of like what I was talking about before, where my practice and the art that I make is separate from the curatorial endeavors that I tend to pursue. Um, that's not to say that an artist curator never puts their work in a show. That can happen, but in different spaces. Whereas this space, it really allows you to concentrate on focusing on a, a massive show. This is a huge show. It is a huge space. Um, I've curated in a lot of different spaces, and this is the largest that I, I took on, which was wonderful. Um, and when you start to put your own work into a show like that, um, 
it can kind of mess with your idea a little bit because you're thinking about where your art is in comparison to the other art where you want to have a clear view you want to be able to just see the exhibition as a larger piece within itself and i think not including your artwork allows you to really focus on that it allows you to have um, a clear eye clear curatorial skills that you're implementing and also if you are interested in pursuing uh more uh curatorial work you do not want to be in the habit of including your own work in those exhibitions it's just um you know it's not going to fly so so that's just something to really keep in mind as you're moving forward with this that's great, Erica. And, you know, just another kind of nugget to tuck in there is uh, if you are an artist that's also a curator, you, you're going to have 10 to 16 artists that you can have within this exhibition. Um, and by not including yourself, that allows you that 10 to 16 artists to be, you know, from anywhere in the state. And that's a gift to yourself, really. So we chatted a bit about this, the original concept and theme of an exhibition. Um, and I think we covered it pretty well, but just to, to reiterate, um, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, but we definitely want your perspective. We want um, to, and maybe to say your perspective is a little too strongly worded, you know, think about as you're putting together a, uh, an exhibition. It could be a theme of material. It could be, uh, you know, a common experience. It could be such a large variety of things that tie together an exhibition. Um, so do you have anything you want to add to that or you feel good about moving? I, I feel good about what you said. I mean, it's just, again, don't feel like you have to reinvent the wheel, like you said. And there are many different ways to um, curate an exhibition underneath themes, like you mentioned, material, um, concept, you know, there's just, there's a lot of different ways. And, and that's up to you, the curator. That's, you know, um, what we want to hear from you. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty well covered. Excellent. So parameters for exhibiting artists. Um, of course, they need to be considered a professional artist. And within our FIQs, we go a little deeper into that. But uh, if you ever have like a really pinpointed question on a particular artist, you can always reach out to me. I'm happy to have those discussions. Just think about a professional artist as someone who is invested in that uh, for the majority of their time, whether they have a nine to five or not, um, that is related to that art, you can still be a professional artist. Um, the additional piece to that is uh, if your, your artists need to be 18 or older, and anyone that is currently enrolled in a degree seeking um, schooling that is associated with art, they have so many amazing opportunities within that curricular uh, expansiveness that this is really for the folks that are outside of that. So just keep that in mind. Um, we chatted a bit about Ohio's geographic diversity. I feel good about that, as well as the intersectional group. So remember that layering of diversity and the many things, the many things to a part that become uh, your kind of cadre of diversity. And then we also chatted about the Individual Excellence Award recipients. Um, so it's super important that we are exhibiting current work. So work that's been made in the last five years. Um, keep in mind that, you know, we're a government agency. This exhibition space is in a government building um, that is free and open to the public. It's a family friendly venue. So, you know, be mindful of content. Um, the other piece that I think we're going to get into a little bit more is the artwork being display ready. Um, so there is a variety of things that mean display ready. What I mean when I say display ready is if you have a painter, it's equipped with the hardware to hang it directly onto the wall. So um, my team won't need to wire it or put cleats on it or anything like that. For those that are sculptural artists, you have work ready to be placed within the space. If you need pedestals, you're uh, indicating that and helping me support in that way. If you're an installation artist, um, I'll work with you to identify the timeline for your install. 
if you have a really clear install that can be done by a preparator team that doesn't require interpretation, um, that's absolutely something that can be taken care of within the team. Anything that requires technology, those artists need to make sure that those things are troubleshot beforehand. Um, so you know what materials you need, you bring those with you. If they're a part of what we already have at the gallery, you come in and ensure that that will work and mesh well, um, and then are available should uh, the need arise for troubleshooting. Um, Erica, do you have any additions to parameters for artwork? No, I, I think that that is, um, you've clearly outlined it, you know, uh, so yeah. Excellent. Um, I think the artwork, the items here that, that note what is important not to incorporate are pretty uh, self-explanatory. You know, we're a relatively small team. It's myself and a part-time amazing marketing and exhibitions fellow. Um, and so that's, you know, a full time and half time position to support the entirety of the space. So if there is uh, work that requires extraordinary upkeep, that is prohibitive to the amount of um, administrative work that we need to do to make sure we support you. Um, so just keep that in mind. And so let's talk a little bit about submission and what that means. Um, let's start with the, uh, this was a really lovely conversation that you and I had, Erica, about like, what does it mean to submit to this um, call? And the initial understanding was that it, it's, it's a complete exhibition. And I was like, no, 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 no. This is a really well-formed idea. Um, so keep that in mind as you are putting together your proposal. Or do you want to touch on that? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, all of you that are listening, the people that are going to be submitting a proposal, um, you are putting the pieces together to give the people that are reviewing it an idea or vision of what you want to have in that space. Now, um, as we all know, as things move forward, things will shift. And so I think that's why it's really wonderful to keep in mind as you put together your proposal, and Kat does such a great job talking about this um, as we kind of work through this, that things are going to shift, but overall you really wanna be able to establish the look and feel of your show through um, the submission materials right here. I also wanna say that I did go through the job form and everything, and it, it is very um, clear, and I'm not gonna say easy, but it was it was easy to navigate. Um, it was not overly complex, which I really appreciate. I'm sure many of you will. Time is precious. You know, um, you can really put your time into creating your letter of intent or finding the images and the artists you want to work with beforehand and just simply put it into the job form and the form that they're um, they're accepting. Um, and the one last thing I want to say, and I'm excited to dive into all of these, is uh, just make sure you're following the instructions. I think that's the biggest thing, um, having curated and then also been on the back end where I get submission materials. When someone is not following the instructions, um, it's almost a waste of time to review that person. So it kind of puts you in a bad light and you don't want to be that person. Um, so just make sure you're, you're following the instructions that are lined out here. Thanks, Erica. So here, here we have it. It's pretty well laid out. Um, first things first, a CV or resume, inclusive, but of course not limited to your contact information, previous relevant curatorial experiences. We chatted about that a little bit earlier. Um, you know, do you have any educational experience within this? Have you had uh, support roles within the curatorial realm? Um, anything like that. Just give us a, a good understanding of your kind of orbit of the curatorial role. And then, of course, links to previous exhibitions that you have curated. Um, so images of that, uh, any kind of writing, uh, media coverage, and that should all be one document. So um, just keep that in mind. And then a working title for the exhibition. Um, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. And then that 300 to 500 word letter of intent. 
So this really is where you've been thinking about those four abs aspects of the proposal that you'll be uh, evaluated on and putting that in here so that the, the panelists have a really great deep understanding of what it is that you are proposing, the, the thrust of the exhibition, um, how and why you've put this together and how it meets the guidelines. Um, and go ahead. I was just gonna add, um... I think what you said there at the end, like like there's two really important important points in here. One is, you know, clearly explaining your idea and also clearly explaining how it meets the guidelines because it has to have both of those parts in order to be accepted. So you don't want to leave the um, panel who's reviewing your application wondering. You want to spell it all out, you know, and just be very clear. It does not have to be, you know, like an amazing conceptual essay. <laughs> I think sometimes um, we think that is what people want to hear, but really they just want to know the nuts and bolts of your idea, your vision, and how you're making it happen and how it fits into the guidelines. So Great. I um, thank you so much for saying that, Erica, because I think it's important for folks to recognize that plain language can absolutely encapsulate all of your ideas. Um, please do not feel a pressure to use art jargon. Um, while I can read it and, and probably comprehend it, a good portion of panelists may not be able to. So using plain language um, to get into the thrust of your exhibition will really go a long way to supporting it. All right, so tentative list of 10 artists. So we're not even asking for a full slate. We're saying, you know, 10 artists, and this is presenting your best idea of what you could put forward. Now, think about if you, like, you know, there are a few art stars, for sure, like <laughs> super rock stars in the state. Um, if you don't have a direct line to them, probably not a great idea to place them as an artist that's going to be a part of your exhibition. So, you know, give us your best, most realistic list of artists that you would like um, to put forward your idea. Um, and, of course, an image uh, that kind of is representative of what you're thinking about for that exhibition. It doesn't have to be the work that will be a part of the exhibition. Representative. Does that make sense, Erica? Did I say that? Totally? Yeah, no, no, you totally explained it very well. I mean, um, as you guys go about putting together your, you know, list of artists, yeah, you want it to be somebody who you can approach, somebody who would be interested in the exhibition. Now, that doesn't mean that they have to be in the exhibition. You know, let's say your proposal is accepted, you know, um, one person, maybe they move. You know, there's, there's a lot of things, and Kat is really wonderful in working working with the flexibility. Whenever you put together an exhibition, you know, there there is going to be that flux in there. But you don't want to just be putting together a list of artists and then none of them, <laughs> you know, there's like, there's no way you can get them, etc. So just being really mindful of that. Um, and I think this is also the the fun part, you know, of curating an exhibition is the research. I think curators and people that are interested in curating enjoy uh, research. And so this is where you really start to um, dive into that in order to give a clear idea and vision of what you want this to look like. And the other thing I will say with this is um, whenever you're curating an exhibition, and mostly for Rife Gallery, which is a very large space, it's something to keep in mind as you go about selecting artists and selecting artwork that you're going to submit. Um, it is a massive space. And so whenever you're curating, you need to think about how the work is going to interact with the actual gallery space. So for example, when I was curating Build It, I knew that there was going to have to be some large pieces to hold a wall. Now that's not to say you have to have that, you know, maybe your proposal has to deal with, I don't know, miniatures or something like that. Um, but it is something you want to think about uh, when you go about um, proposing your, 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 the show and the artists in it. Great, perfect. Thank you. Um, and then the last bit here is references. So uh, to clarify, I am not looking for reference letters. I'm not, not asking you to have three people send references. What we are asking for is three professional references that you can list 
um, that understand your curatorial ethos and can speak to that. And then you should put in a sentence or, or two about how you know that person um, so that when we reach out to them, um, one, they, they know we may call and um, two, they're prepared to be able to, to speak on your behalf. Great. So um, just really quickly, I am going to address a question because I, I think as curators, the tentative list of artists, that's like such a big part of this, right? You know, you're like, do I approach the artist beforehand? Do I not approach the artist? You know, how am I going to handle this? So someone had a question of, you know, do they have to have an existing relationship with the artist? Um, a lot of the artists that I included in the exhibition build it, I did not know prior. Um, so I did reach out to them to have a conversation. So a way that you can address this, because maybe you don't want to say, hey, can I put your piece in a show because you haven't had your proposal accepted yet? You may say, hey, you know, um, I've seen your work. I really enjoy it. You know, could we do a studio visit? Could we chat via Zoom? And you can kind of start to feel out if they would be interested in being in an exhibition that, you know, you curate someday. And you can even mention that, you know, like, I really like your work, you know, I'm trying to put together different shows around the state or wherever, you know, um, is that something you'd be interested in maybe in the future? So you don't have to say straight up, you know, I'm putting your show in a work or I'm putting your work in a show, but rather just starting to get that ball rolling. Um, but you do want to have a little bit of a sense of, of who they are, um, um, just in terms of, or that they'll be receptive. Um, so I hope that kind of answers that question a little bit for you guys. And feel free to put it in the chat if you want us to talk more about that. That's great. Thank you, Erica. Um, yes, that's a absolutely great point. Um, no, I don't expect every single artist that you put into your tentative list to be a close personal friend that, or uh, established relationship. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Um, each of the curators I've worked with thus far, there have been a good portion of the artists that they in fact do not know, and this expands their network um, just by the nature of this type of curation. Um, and that's also exciting. So now let's have a look at our resources. Um, so here at the bottom, you have your helpful links. It's also up at the top. I'll make you all dizzy real quick right here too. Um, so let's, let's kind of go through them one at a time. So we'll start with the gallery layout and I'll just press control and click that and it pops a new, um, window for me. And then I'll do that for the submission checklist and I'll do it for the individual excellence awardees. Um, the OEC Rife Gallery PED and Tech Inventory, that's actually an Excel list. And if you click on that, it'll automatically download to your computer. Have no fear. No bugs in it. I promise I didn't put them in there. Um, and then uh, here is a link to the OAC Rife Gallery Exhibition Archive and FACs, so FAQs. So we'll start here with the layout. So this gives you a good sense of the space. So we chatted a bit about, you know, the kind of winding nature of, of the space and how that breaks apart. And Erica had mentioned those windows, you know, they're noted here. So you can see that can be a really great location for installations or sculptural work. Um, but again, there's, there's many ways to do this. Um, so that's the layout. It talks a little bit here about the running feet and the wall height. Um, and then I will also chat with you about kind of particularities of how layouts work well or haven't based on what selections come through. Um, next up, handy dandy checklist. This you can print out and like have right next to you and make sure that you have created all of these items, saved them into a particular folder, named them appropriately. So here you can, you know, make a folder on your computer, put in your CV or resume, uh, note your, you're going to know your title, um, put together your language. So your 300 to 500 words, put that in a document there, your tentative list of artists. So you could do an Excel where you can copy and paste from that. Um, and then all of your images. So here we, we note the naming convention, how you name those files that you're uploading. So last name of the artist title of the artwork, and then gives you the formatting as well. 
So this is super helpful. I hope you all will download it. And I can't see under my headline, so I'm just gonna go ahead and choose this and direct away from it. So big old shout out to my esteemed colleague, Katie Monahan, who helped me put to this together. It is like visual mana. Um, this, my friends, is where you can have a look at the last three um, rounds of individual excellence awardees for our individual excellence. I just said that individual excellence award for the last three rounds. So you can click to the crafts. It has a direct link or you can just scroll through. But look at how that visually comes together. It gives you a really great sense of who these artists are, what kind of art they're making, when they received their award. Um, so super helpful. If we have links to those artists' websites, they're in there, um, makes it easy for you to connect with them. So super cool, right? I think it's super cool. I could I could go and just hang out and look at that all the time. <laughs> I could too. I could do it so great. <laughs> Here is the OEC Rife Gallery Exhibition Archive. This is a handy dandy place that you can go to get a sense of how exhibitions have been put together. Um, and since we have Erica here, we'll just click on build it. And here we are. Have a look at this. Over on the right hand side, you can see any kind of reviews that are there. We have this uh, virtual content, so virtual scavenger hunts, um, the reflection exercise. Go ahead, Erica. Go ahead. I was going to say, I just, I can't get over how great this is to have. <laughs> There's like, you know, a video tour of it. It's just wonderful programming. And that's the other thing is um, if your exhibition or your submission is selected, there's such great programming surrounding the entire thing from having artist talks, you know, um, a curator tour. It was just really, really wonderful. And I also want to say that when I was putting together all of my materials, I would go in here and just look at different things to kind of get a sense of what has been shown there, uh, the scope of um, artwork. It was just a really good resource to have. So I would highly suggest to you guys that you dive in there and you look at some past exhibitions, um, read about them. It's just, it's very helpful to know what has been um, shown. Absolutely. So I just scrolled down so you all could have a look at uh, previous. Yes, there you go. Um, and then last but not least are the FAQs, um, which I think will nicely dovetail into our Q&A. But this is a place where you can dive into questions that you probably have um, and get a little clarity. So it's a three page document not overwhelming, uh, organized as neatly as we could think to do so. Um, yeah, you can print that out and have a closer look too. So I am going to go ahead and stop sharing. And I think we have entered our Q&A period of the webinar. So let's see here. I am just pulling up the Q&A and, oh, is the gallery fully accessible? Are there places to sit throughout? Absolutely, yes. Um, we are first floor, um, we are um, wheelchair accessible, we're on the bus line. Uh, we do ADA standard for all of our labeling. So those with low vision have access. Uh, we also do it as far as how we um, place them so that it's at a height that those that are, that may be in wheelchairs can still see as well. Um, and yes, we have seating throughout, and we also have movable seating that's very light if folks have that need to. Um, let's see, where else do we have questions? Okay, you answered that great question. Um, curious about the past Rife Gallery exhibitions, and Katie took care of that. Um, we have an anonymous attendee that has asked about the Ohio Artist Registry to find artists. Um, and I think that that's a very fair place to go and find artists. Absolutely. I think any 
any kind of avenue that you can take to identify and find artists across the state is fantastic. The Ohio Artists Registry is one. The Individual Excellence Awardees is one. Um, good old Google will help you out. Um, yeah. And then there was a question within that that asked about inclusion of your own work. I think we covered that, so I feel good about that. Aha, uh -huh, here we have, oh, we're, they're coming in now. Can we speak more Great. to the curatorial references? Um, I'm an artist. I've been curated in many different kinds of shows. I've hung and printed labels for other shows, but I've never curated. Should I still apply? Absolutely. Absolutely. If you have a perspective and an exhibition idea, put it forward. Um, if this is an avenue that you're looking to um, pursue, we want to hear from you. Absolutely. And I was just going to say, you know, um, you're an artist, so you've worked with other artists. You may have worked with curators who have put together your exhibitions. All of those people can be references. Um, so you you probably have more references than you know what to do with. <laughs> so just rely on those. Um, and yeah, go ahead and apply. I mean, again, get on that list. We'd love to see your work. Absolutely. We have a question regarding living things uh, being prohibited in the gallery, and uh, this person asked about artwork involving food or liquid. So anything that has the potential to attract bugs or things like that or requires additional maintenance. So anything living um, food should not be included within that. Uh, it's a 10 week exhibition, so the, the chance for that to spoil and become problematic for the interior of the of the exhibition space, um, yeah. So, and I think that that's also clearly outlined within um, the parameters parameters for the artwork. So, if you go back and have a look at that. Um, that should define it nice and clearly for you too. All right. So we have a question. What surprised you most? This is for you, Erica. Mm -hmm. um, or what was an unexpected challenge about curating for the rife? <sighs> Unex okay, well, there's two things, actually. <laughs> So when I curated um, the exhibition Build It for the Rife, it was, um, I started the process before COVID, <laughs> and then ended up curating and finishing the exhibition during the middle of COVID. So this is not something that I hope happens again or anything, but that was a huge thing to work through. Um, but we were able to do it, you know, we were able to still make it work. Uh, the biggest thing I think that happened with that was that most of the studio visits I had done in person already. So I had lined them all up. I was traveling all over the state and seeing work in person. And then there were about two people uh, that I could not meet in person. And we had to do like a Zoom studio visit, which is very different than, um, of course, seeing the work in person mostly because one of the artists was um, an installation artist. So <laughs> I went from being able to see the work in person and walking through it to being on a small um, computer screen. Uh, so that that was an interesting experience. Again, we still made it work. It was great. The work looked great. Um, but the other thing, and I've mentioned this a few times during this talk, but I just think it's something that does need to be highlighted, is, you know, I've, I've curated in various spaces and um, each space presents unique opportunities and challenges. And Rife, its opportunity is the space and the challenge is the space. You know, you have to really think about what is going to hold um, a wall or hold uh, a different part of the gallery. And that's where the, um, the layout is really helpful. Uh, Kat saw this, I had like laid it all out with, on an iPad and was measuring and putting things in different areas to see what was going to work next to each other. Um, and so again, that was such a gift to be able to put together um, a show of the scale, but it's also something that you really need to consider as you put it together. I hope yes, that answered your question. <laughs> that's great. And thank you for that. I, I'll also mention to folks that typically, uh, depending on size, when you're thinking about the the rife space anywhere from 30 very large pieces to you know 
it could 30 to 70 70 on the very very high end will fit into the space and i am more than happy to work with folks to identify how and what that uh will massage into so no worries there um we have a question regarding contacting artists to make sure they're interested i think catch as catch can there like to an extent but i wouldn't make that your mo i think that uh divining your plan is the key and then creating something to support that is uh the best kind of way to go about that the next is uh you have to have prior curatorial experience in order to apply not necessarily um you can have ancillary experience um so however that may support a curatorial role whether you have been an assistant to a curator you've been within the exhibition space and supported through a variety of other roles um anything that gives us an understanding of your comprehension of the curatorial role and what that will entail is the key there mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. yeah I, I just wanted to add in there you know um I'm an artist that I'm trained as an artist that is, uh, I think my my core identity professionally. And I was an artist who was interested in curation and putting together exhibitions. And so I had to start out too, you know, I had to start at a point where I just decided, okay, you know, we're gonna, I'm gonna start putting together these shows. And um, what they're just trying to get an understanding of is that you, have had experience in a gallery um, that this is not something totally foreign to you, you know, so just think of it that way, you know, you've hung maybe some work on a wall, you know, you've had this experience and um, you want to be more involved in it. And so if you do not have any prior curatorial you know, specific um, experience, but you've been in the arts, you probably have much more than you are giving yourself credit for. Uh, so sit down and just think of all the shows you may have helped hung or printed out labels for or had your own work in, um, etc. And, and that really can be your experience. Thanks, Erica. Appreciate that. So um, another kind of piece to that is whether or not your um, medium is underrepresented. This person notes that they are a photographer and their medium is underrepresented in exhibitions. Um, we have lots of really amazing photographers in that individual excellence award, uh, that additional resource. So great way to find those folks and expand that network and celebrate the artists doing that work. So um, it still stands that if you are submitting that the proposal yourself, your artwork should not be included. Um, if you are like really, really enthusiastic about your work being included at the Rife Gallery, talk to a curator, see if they would have interest in putting together a proposal that is inclusive of you as an artist. Nothing wrong with that. Um, oh, great question. Thanks, Char. Um, who selects the winning proposals? Talk about the panel and process. Um, I was hoping someone would ask this. Um, so for its inaugural year, the panel will be comprised of the OAC team. So think about the folks that are our organizational programs coordinators that are across the state and deeply invested in the arts all around Ohio. Those folks are going to be looking at this. Um, our individual excellence award team and our percent for arts team are going to be involved in this. The executive director, the deputy director, the entirety of the OAC staff will be there. And keep in mind that as a part of the OAC team, everyone on that team has a vested personal and professional interest in the arts. Um, so they are well versed and very capable and very excited to see these proposals. Hopefully I answered that well enough for you. Um, have we accepted newcomers to curate? So this is a first time call. And I'm going to say if that proposal meets the requirements and catches the eye and and fits the bill absolutely there's the potential for it i can't promise it but there is absolutely the potential for it um is nude artwork acceptable great question so 
Nude work is standard within the arts community. It is not standard within the broader community. So where we accept um, a community of folks that may not be of the um, kind of arts academia, they're not familiar with that kind of experience and viewing nudes as um, subject matter within painting rather than um, it being inflammatory. So unfortunately, we're not able to have nudes, um, but thank you for asking that question. So um, does the $3,500 stipend go, toward, go towards general exhibition costs? So within the proposal, you will see that it notes that that stipend, it's actually an honorarium. So the proposals that are selected, that curator is able to use those funds for the work that they need to do. So let me, I have that written very clearly. So that is inclusive, but not limited to the research, writing, studio visits, and travel that that curator will do. Um, we take care of the other costs. Yes. I just uh, wanted to ask a question to follow up on that. Um, uh, the money that you receive the honorarium you can of course use towards the travel the gas money all of that stuff but it is the curator's money that's that right they are just paid so you guys it doesn't have to be like um you're putting together a proposal and i'm going to spend 500 dollars on gas and 200 dollars on whatever this is just your money that you can use towards that but you do not have to state what you're using it for or have it be used towards the exhibition it's the understanding of the agency in all of the work that we've done prior and exhibitions that we put on prior that this amount allows for it to be uh, a reasonable compensation for the curator. Mm -hmm. um, how long is the deadline for submission? Is there rounds of questions within the application process? So um, my my best recommendation there is to go and pull the proposal and look really closely at it. Um, the deadline for proposal is March 11th at 11.59 p.m. <laughs> um, so while it is that late in the day on a Friday, I highly suggest that you put a hard stop for yourself for submission at least two weeks in advance because you never know. You never know if your internet will go out. You'll never know if the rush of um, proposals coming in will cause issue. Um, you really, really, really want to make sure that yours gets in. So give yourself a pre deadline. I know it. I know it's hard. It's hard to not go right up against the deadline. And you know, I forgot to do a thing. We are right up at time. Oh my goodness, we've gone a minute over. Everyone, I hope you're okay with this, but we're going to go over a little bit. I'm sorry. Um, I have to share my screen and show you something. Um, do do do. Call for entries. Share the like most um, important, exciting <laughs> bit that I did not absolutely did not show you. Um, this handy dandy button right here puts you right through to our e form, um, which is the call. So, this is where you put your information in. You can see it's really clean, very straightforward. You put your name in, you put your contact info, your email. Um, here, you choose a file. It even gives you a drop or a drop down or a like pop up that explains what it is that you're uploading. Um, this is where you put your artist information. This is where you put your images. And then notes is anything else that you wanna add that you didn't have another space to put it. Um, and then at the very bottom is your submit button. This is a one sitting deal. So make sure you have everything in that file folder that we chatted about before. When you press submit, you will receive an email that says that you have successfully submitted your proposal. So if you did not receive that, then that means that it did not go through, um, that maybe something didn't get uploaded or something like, it'll give you a trigger for you to do something else. So anyway, wanted to make sure I showed you that. I'm gonna stop sharing again. Okay, back to the Q and A's. Um, that was a very exciting sidebar. I hope you all enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to highlight again how nicely done and short that form is guys so there's not rounds you know like the question was being asked before there's not rounds and questions etc it is right there that is what you need to submit all right let's see here 
can multiple artists collaborate on an installation piece? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, absolutely. I think that um, there are plenty of folks that will identify teams within the curatorial um, proposal. So if there are artists that work together regularly, um, I wouldn't suggest uh, making that kind of melding on your own as a curator. That's a that's a whole different thing. I think for the Rife, if there are two artists that standard work together, um, then they can be presented as an artist. Yes. Um, let's see here. Do the artists get to list their displayed art for sale? Absolutely. Um, so as a portion of display within the exhibitions at Rife, we have a, a price list if those folks would like to be, um, would like to sell their work, that absolutely. Um, as a state agency, we're not able to handle those interactions. So if someone reaches out and says that they're interested in purchasing a work, I put that buyer and the artist directly together. Um, so that's exciting. Now, if someone's represented by a uh, by someone and they need to be contacted through them, I, I'll do that as well. I'll make that connection. Oh, is there a timeline for notifying selection or rejection? Great question. Thank you. Um, we are going to be so deadline for submission is March 11th, and then we have probably a good. We're going to do rounds of review to narrow it down. And then our hope is to uh, announce to everyone mid-May the selections. So it'll actually be four exhibitions in 2024 and the first exhibition in 2025. All right. And I think uh, there's one last question that I think is relevant to this chat, which is, Erica, how many hours do you think you devoted to the curatorial <laughs> projects on average? Let's talk about the Rife. How about the Rife? Like, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to, I'm trying to sum it up. Um, I honestly could not give you an exact number, but if you were to put about three hours we would say per artist that was in the show that's already 36 hours um plus there was some artists that i ended up doing studio visits with that were not in the exhibition um plus writing the uh so if you do have your exhibition your your proposal accepted you will be writing about the artists who are in the exhibition which was wonderful i really love doing that but that's going to add some time onto it as well so let's go for 90 hours i don't know if that <laughs> It may be more, it may be less. I'm yeah. really sorry. I think <laughs> it'll be different for each person as that's well, right. depending on you know what they're doing. I also got really into, as I mentioned earlier, moving the artwork around because I there were certain conversations I wanted to have between the pieces. So I was on an iPad moving things around quite a bit, which may not, you know, you may not do that. So um, it really depends per person. But um, I did, I did spend a good amount. But I think that if you are going to be putting a proposal together, and you want to, of course, have the best exhibition out there that you can, you know, you should anticipate putting quite a bit of time into it in order to make it exceptional. That's great. And you know, the other thing, Erica, to think about is that, um, the kind of circuitous nature of uh, the arts in that the networks that were created from the exhibition that you curated um, have sprouted into new things like oh, you yes. new relationships and new opportunities. Um, that's another thing that I really love just about the nature of exhibitions and curators and working with artists, particularly through this venue, because it does expand that network. And then from each of those, there's greater expansion. So when you think about, you know, that pebble into water and the many, many ripples. Um, it's wonderful. Kat, I wouldn't have met you if it wasn't for somebody curating an exhibition. My friend was in a show and we were introduced and, you know, um, it just continues to go on and on, like you said. So definitely worth it. <laughs> yes. And then um, the very last 
bit here that I just want to touch on lightly. Um, if there are questions that we didn't get to, I'll be sure to follow up with you later. We're close on time and I want to make sure that I talk about, we had, we had someone ask about our favorite art shows that involved you as a curator and what made it successful. There are so many phenomenal exhibitions. Um, you know, it's hard to pick favorites. Uh, but I had a really great I had a really great experience with Erica for Build It. Um, I thought that the exhibitions that we've had in the past year have all been really incredibly strong for different reasons. The the most important bit for my side um, as an administrator and being able to support as best I can is clear and consistent communication um, and always. Um, coming with the understanding of positive intent, knowing that we're each coming to the table trying to bring forward the best exhibition possible. How about you, Erica? You want to speak to that? Does that sound right? That that sounds right, right there. You know, um, it's curation. You're working with a lot of people. You know, um, you're working with different artists. You are working with Cat and um, holding up your end and um, just having a great experience. I mean, it, it's really a wonderful opportunity. So I, I think you hit the nail on the head, Kat. Perfect. Um, and then there was another question about mistakes or bloopers that you can share, key takeaways. The, the most key takeaway is make sure that you read uh, the proposal and should your proposal be selected, make sure you read clearly the contract so that you know every little bit when things are due um, and ask clarifying questions. That's the most important. Um, and then I think that that takes us to time. So thank you all so much for joining us. Um, and we really hope we see your proposals. Uh, make sure you submit them. And if you have questions, reach out. Uh, my email, I think Katie has put into the chat and is available for you. Um, I can't wait to see those proposals. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Erica. Thank you, Katie. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Kat. Thanks, Erica. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in today. Um, I just wanted to remind everyone that if you maybe came in late and you missed a portion of the webinar, uh, the recording will be available on our webinars page by the end of the week. I'm going to post that um, in the chat here really quick for everyone. And uh, Thanks so much for hanging in there with us. This was a lot of really great information. I think we're super excited to uh, see what comes of this, uh, to see what we get uh, in March. So thank you all. Thank you, Kat. Thank you so much, Erica. And we will see you next time. All right. Bye.